Today we're going to be talking about a concept called plane strain. Uh, plane strain is a very important idea that's used commonly in engineering with structures. Plane strain has a lot in common with plane stress, although the physical intuition behind plane strain is is different. Um, so I'll start by trying to describe the intuition behind when an engineer might employ the plane strain assumption to a problem. Uh, I think kind of a classic example would be, for example, if you had a steel railroad tie, right, and we assume that it's kind of infinitely long, so it goes off to the left and right indefinitely, and you know, the, if this was a steel railroad tie, the only load that it would be that would, it would experience would be kind of a a load that's lateral. It's acting in a lateral direction, coming from a train passing over uh, the railroad uh, the track. And what you notice here is that if you want to understand the stress-strain behavior, let's say if you were to slice out a piece, uh, I guess this isn't a railroad tie, I'm mistaken, this would be like the track, but if you wanted to cut out a piece of the track here and observe the stress-strain behavior, you would anticipate that the stress-strain behavior of this piece of the track should be identical to a piece down here or a piece over here. And what's happening here is that in reality, because there's so much material to the left and to the right of this segment of material, we can assume if we call this the z direction, we can assume that epsilon z is zero. And so anything in the z, at any strain in, in the z direction is going to be zero. And that's called a plane strain condition. So if epsilon z is equal to gamma xz is equal to gamma yz is equal to zero, so anything, right, anything in the z direction, any strain component in the z direction is zero, we call that plane strain. And you can see that this example of this the track of this railroad, this long piece of steel, satisfies this assumption because any piece that we cut out, whether it be this one, this one, or this piece, all of them will not have components of strain in the z direction because there's an infinite amount of material for them to push out of the way in order for there to be a strain that develops in that direction. And so this entire infinitely long piece of steel can basically be boiled down to a simple two-dimensional problem in the x-y coordinate. So any, any slice is the same as any other slice. And so it takes a three-dimensional problem and reduces it to a two-dimensional setting. And so as an engineer, you'll often be tasked with analyzing things that behave in this plane strain setting and uh, it, it, the purpose of it from an engineering point of view is it reduces the complexity of a three-dimensional problem to a simpler two-dimensional problem. Okay, so I'm not going to say too much about plane strain. M mostly what I I'm actually interested in you understanding is the intuition that I just described. I think that is the thing that you'll remember and is most important. And you'll notice that plane strain and plane stress are kind of analogs to one another. In plane stress, every all the stresses in the z direction are zero, while in plane strain, all the strains in the z direction are zero. So you can analyze plane strain using a slightly modified version 
of Moore's circle. And it's very simple. Everything that you normally do with Moore's circle, you do in the case of plane strain, except that a relabeling of, of quantities occurs. So let me write down what this relabeling will be here quickly. So on the left, in the left here, are going to be all the quantities that you normally see in plane stress. Okay, so we have all the sigma terms and the tau terms that are non-zero in plane stress. And then let me write corresponding terms on the right here for plane strain. I'll explain these one halves here in a minute. Okay, and so the way that you do more circle in plane strain is when you set up the coordinate axes and you label terms, any time that you would have used one of the terms from plane stress, you'll just substitute it for the corresponding term in plane strain. So for example, the x-axis on Moore's circle, normally labeled with sigma x1, will now be labeled with epsilon x1. And the y-axis, which is normally labeled in a plane stress condition as tau x1 y1, will be labeled with gamma x1 y1 over 2 and so on. And so everything else about Moore's circle is exactly the same except for a simple relabeling that occurs of the quantities on Moore's circle. And then you just proceed with all the same um, ideas that you would normally use in plain stress.